All right, well, so much for all the fine talk. What I'd like to do now is I've actually got a WAP configured, and well, it's not all the way configured. We're going to go through some of the settings. I've got a WAP set up and ready to go. Uh, I've got it plugged in, and I read the instructions, and I know what its IP address is, and I'm going to use that to actually access the WAP and show you one of the more typical ways we use to configure WAPs, and that's through a web page. Welcome to my Linksys WAPs web page. What I've done here is I went ahead, and you can see I actually typed in an IP address. Now, that's not the default IP address. I actually had another IP address, and I plugged my laptop directly into this, so it was just my laptop and my WAP with one piece of RJ45 between us. I configured my laptop to be in the same network ID as the WAP, and then they were able to see each other, and I was able to make some changes. I changed it to this number because this number fits within my local area network. This makes it part of my network with all my other wired computers. Let's look at some of your basic 802.11 setup options. First of all, this is your AP name. This is just an arbitrary descriptor. If you're looking around for wireless access points, it just gives you names. So I can do something clever like, now everybody will know whose it is. Now keep in mind that this is a very IP-centric type of technology. And you can see right here, it actually requires IP addressing. And now just because it's a WAP, that doesn't mean that it's not a part of the network. So we actually have to give, give it its own IP address and default gateway and subnet mask, everything else. These fit the criteria of my network just fine. I can even set this thing up to do DHCP if I want to. I prefer to use static IP, though. As we scroll down, here's some of the interesting wireless stuff. The first one we need to talk about is the SSID. By default, it's Linksys, and that's a dangerous thing to do. All of these little WAPs have built-in default passwords. And unfortunately, like every Linksys machine in existence has the password of admin, A-D-M-I-N. So if I boot up my laptop and I start seeing a bunch of WAPs and they all say Linksys, I can actually try to access this screen. You don't want me in the configuration screen of your WAP. So I'm going to give it a different name. All right. The other one here, and this is an important one, this is called SSID Broadcast. Do you want other computers to see this WAP? Now, this is a security issue. First of all, normal people will not be able to see you if you turn off SSID broadcast. In other words, regular people will not see you and they will not try to get in. However, people can get software that allows them to see wireless networks, whether they're broadcasting their SSID or not. So the bad guys will still probably be able to get in eventually, although it's pretty hard to do. You get a lot of argument on this. Personally, I like to turn it off. but there are other people who go, you know what, if somebody really needs to get onto my wireless network, I'm not going to bother. If somebody actually wants to sit in my front yard and, you know, cruise the Internet, as long as they're not doing anything too terribly bad, I guess it's okay. So I'm going to leave it as enabled right now. Now, here we have a channel. Now, right now it's set to channel 6. And again, most of these WAPs default to one particular channel. Pretty much all Linksys is default to channel 6. So you know what happens if you start getting too many Linksys WAPs close to each other. Yep, somebody's changing the channel. And then wireless security. Wireless security is either enabled or disabled. Let's go through wireless security so you can get an understanding of what's taking place. So now I can pick the type of security mode I want to use. So here's the uh, two different versions of WPA. Here's radius by itself. This brings up an interesting point that people ask me a lot. And they go, Mike, what does that mean? You know, folks, I've been working in the computer business for 20 years and I've yet to see a configuration screen on anything. I don't care if it's a Microsoft Word document or a CMOS or setting up a router or whatever it might be. I guarantee you can always find one thing that I don't know what it means. And you know what? If I don't know what it means, I'm not that worried about it. Okay, so let's see what else we have here. We have default transmit keys. What you could do is, I'm going to use WP just because it's fast and easy. When you create a passphrase, it generates four keys. There we go. Now, once these four keys are generated, I can say which one by default do you want me to use. Uh, it's a little extra security if you might want to do that. Now, right now it's set to 64. I can actually go to 128 if I want to. Ta -da! Now I've got great big long ones. That is really all I need to do for web. WPA, at least in the shared mode, works about exactly the same way. Now, once I've got my security set up, Really, I'm, this, this WAP is pretty much ready to go. I've got a channel set. I've got an SSID. I've set up some WEP security. 
And this thing's ready to start taking orders from some wireless NICs. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to fire up a wireless NIC, and let's see, cross your fingers, it never works the first time. Let's see if I can hook in to this particular wireless network. Now, I've got myself a wireless network card in here, and I've gone ahead and you install it just like you install any network card. And I install it, and I get this little screen. It says, there are some wireless networks available. So I'm going to click here, and I'm going to type in my network key, just because I remember what I did. Now, what's interesting, do you see where it says Linksys? Remember, I changed that. Why does it still say Linksys? Because I did the one thing you should never do on every page, and this is pretty much universal for all WAPs. If you change one page of any of these web pages, you have to hit Save Settings on that page before you move to another page. Now, if you noticed, I went into Security before I hit Save, so it defaulted back. And, oh, is this like holding your breath? Yay! Okay. It's so easy to mess this up. You can mess up passwords, just all kinds of stuff. It's, I always hold my breath the first time I try to catch into a network. So what I'm going to do now, I've got multiple network cards in this system, so it doesn't like that. So I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to a command prompt, and I'm going to run ipconfig. I'm going to do an all so you can see everybody in here, and I'm going to have to do a little scrolling here. Well, actually, here it is, right at the bottom, so this works out real well. This is what my wireless network card. Just because it's a wireless card, that doesn't mean anything changes. For example, if I go in there, I can set its IP address and everything. It doesn't change a thing. The only thing that does change is that it's wireless, so I don't have to run a cable out to it to make it work. In a situation like this, because I've done it a couple of million times, it seems to work really, really nicely. And to be honest with you, if you're patient, you don't mess up your WEP encryption, and you remember to change a channel, and you forget to, and you remember to install the drivers correctly, it really does work fairly flawlessly, so it's not that hard to use. Just be patient with it and understand that I've messed up a million times for every time that I've done it right. All right, so everybody seems to be running pretty well now. What I want to do is let's talk about making this be even bigger. One of the questions I get from folks is, Mike, I'm not getting a good signal with my wireless network. What can I do to boost it? Well, my secret is, well, not much of a secret at all. It's using these guys right here. What I have in front of me are booster antennas. These are expressively designed for WAPs, and they'll fit into almost every WAP made. Now, this one right here is a directional. With this particular one, I need to have another one, and they literally point at each other, and the distances can literally be measured. I think the record, not with this particular brand, but with a custom-made job, was something like 10 kilometers, okay? You won't do that with these, but the distance can be dramatic. The other one is this omnidirectional. Omnidirectional is just you need to boost uh, one particular WAP and you don't have a direction, you get one of these. They're pretty simple to use. All I need to do is take this old, and you just you don't need two antennas. Even though I got, uh, even though I have two antennas on here, you only need one. And I'm going to use an omnidirectional in this case. I've got adapters for to fit the different threads and all that. And you screw it in, and you may have to do a little bit of adjusting, but the bottom line is you will increase your boost dramatically by doing something like that. Oh no, look at me. Okay, I'm a computer nerd, I'm playing with radio waves, and I'm tuning antennas. Oh man, get some tape for my glasses, people. I've turned totally nerd.